Man, be safe. Nice hey, nice to meet you. Thanks, rude boy. All right, my guy. I like the trophies, though. They're sweet. Thanks, bro. All right, let's get on. Um, you want the razor, razor, or you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll take the razor on the uh, go to. Yeah. Yes, uh. So, how did you two meet? Uh, I met Trey. Actually, through his son. Yeah. I I'd, uh, cut his son <laughs> here in my shop in Springfield. And uh, I think the second or third time that he had came, Trey had came in and, and introduced himself as his father. Mm -hmm. And I think that was maybe 2017, mm -hmm. something like that, 2016, 17. You guys been close ever since? Ever since I moved down to this place. Mm -hmm. We, we became a little bit closer because he was coming in more. Uh, you know, we talked, we, we shared a good love of food. Yeah. And, you know, different places that we would try, hey, try this, or, you know, <laughs> go see, you know, dude over here. He yeah. got something for you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, then, and then what just always stepped out was just his, his personality, you know, the way he carried himself. He always had a smile and an encouraging word, you know. Nothing bad ever to say about anybody, you know. Even through, even through the different things, like when we would talk about different programs and stuff like that. See, he, he, he always spoke highly of the coaches. Uh, always, you know, try to, you know, just be be the best person that he could. I, I I have never seen this guy say a bad word about anyone. So one of the questions that are asked of me a lot is, do I feel my program is better than other programs? Um, I, don't even, I don't even really entertain that. Um, the definition of excellence is basically you striving to maximize your full potential. So, very similar to Kobe Bryant, he used Michael Jordan as a barometer, but his desire was to be the best version of him. So when I first started my AAU program, I think like anybody, you look at other successful programs, and your desire is to, at minimum, be as good as they are, if not better. But the longer that I got in the game, I stopped focusing on what other people were doing, and I started focusing on being the best version of me. If you follow our program, you'll notice we pray with other programs, we pray for referees. We have the desire to help kids get better. So if you think about this, in Ohio, the rule is now, the new rule, is you can have up to three kids per school on a team. So if I only wanted to be the only program in the state of Ohio, I only got 22 teams and only three kids in one grade could play. Like that would be very selfish. And that would only be about me. So for me personally, back in the day, maybe I was worried about competing against other programs about being better. Now it's about how can we be the best version of ourselves so we can send kids back to their schools better for their coaches and more importantly as you hear in every episode man can we help introduce kids to gods or can we help kids grow the relationship with god so for us it ain't about us being better than another program it's about us being better than yesterday I'd like to say, you know, I mean that when I when I was younger, I made a lot of foolish mistakes, mm -hmm. said a lot of few foolish things, uh, and I had to pay for it, had to pay the price. But uh, just through time and knowing who I really was, mm -hmm. and that what I've been through. Mm -hmm did not have to define who I was at this moment, then things began to change. I mean, and it didn't change like all of a sudden. You had, I had to work at it. Right, it takes time. I had to work. I made a lot of choices. So for me, I mean, just like anybody, I mean, no one wants to deal with confrontation, but I don't really have an issue dealing with that. Um, and I think my big reason I don't is because I genuinely have people's best interests at hand. And so when I deal with confrontation, um, 
it's nothing to run from because generally speaking, if somebody is confronting me about an issue, it's normally because they are lacking understanding about something. So a perfect example, I had a parent come to me yesterday, met with me after training. We talked for about 90 minutes and he wanted to know why I called his kid lazy. And so I explained to the father that um, A, he had only heard a per portion of the conversation. He didn't hear the whole conversation. And the conversation was basically about me challenging his son to be the best version of him. And what I had told his son that there are times that he can be lazy. And what I had reiterated at the end of the conversation is I said, what I said to you doesn't define who you are. What I was saying to you is how you conduct yourself at times. So do you ever get discouraged as a coach? Like what keeps you motivated? Man, absolutely I get discouraged. Like, believe it or not, this is gonna sound real common sense, but I think when people are in the situation, they tend to unhumanize people. So a perfect example is a referee. So as a kid and a college student, my buddies and I would go to games just so we can basically chirp at referees, not realizing that they were human. And as a coach, I think there are times that coaches go through that same thing, you know, that people don't realize. And again, we know this, this year, you know, I'm coming to practice or going to games with the weight of, is my wife going to live? Now, somebody might come to me after a game upset because their kid didn't start. And then if I'm being honest, I'm thinking, did your kid start? Like, we just won the game by 20, and you worried about if your kids start? And so, you know, one of the challenges that you have is when you know you're trying to give people your best and they don't recognize that you're giving your best, then that can be discouraging. And if, and if you're not careful as a person, and I've been guilty of this, that can come out the wrong way. It can come out through yelling. It can come out through responding emotionally say something out of context. I mean, there's been times that I've done things where I regret because of that, you know, and so I think definitely personally for me, uh, have I been discouraged? Absolutely. How do I get motivated? Man, our core values say it all. You know, there's God, family, toughness, and hard work. And so, you know, when I, when I focus on pleasing God, I'm stronger in every aspect of life. If I'm being honest, when I forget about him, that's when I that's when I have the potential to make poor choices. I'm not saying I don't always make good choices. I'm saying when God's not the center, there's a higher chance that I can do something ignorant that when I look back, I'm like, why in the world did I do that? You know, because if somebody comes to me with a question, when I got God as the center of my response, then I'm trying to empathize with that person. I'm trying to hear and see what their pain is. When I don't have God as a sinner, I'm just thinking about me. Yeah. You're looking, bro. Yes, Appreciate you, man. Good. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah.